Extreme 4x4, where we've taken the show on the road, so to speak. But in a way, it's kind of like a homecoming for both of us. This week, we're working at WyoTech in Sacramento, California. Before we launched Extreme 4x4, I attended WyoTech, where I was trained in custom body and paint, chassis fabrication, high performance engines, all the skills that pay the bills. You look pretty studious there, Jess. Thanks, haven't changed. And before I came to build awesome rays at Extreme 4x4, I was teaching high school auto shop and custom fabrication in a technical high school. So that leads us to what we're doing here today. We're going to turn this 82 solid axle Toyota long bed into a competition rock crawler, but we won't be the ones building it. That job goes to this group of soon-to-be WyoTech graduates. This Sacramento campus is an 80,000 square foot facility offering a wide range of courses in the automotive field. And our young builders are hand-picked with perfect attendance and are at the top of their class in chassis fabrication. What your guys' job is this week is to build this truck. You have all the options. Ian and I are just here to help you out. You have the rules, which we've just gone over, so you know what you can and cannot do. The final crawl ratio of this whole thing is 148 to 1. And if you do the math off that, when the motor's at 3,500 RPM, you're doing 2.5 miles per hour. Slow. Now let's get at it. You guys ready to take a look? This is it guys, a Formula Toy Spec Class Rock Crawler. But it's not just any Spec Class Crawler. This is last season's Formula Toy Champion, driven by Lisa Linker and built and maintained by her husband Eric, better known as Camo. All right, guys, we talked about it in the classroom, and this is it, Formula Toy Rock Crawling. Now, it's pop quiz time, so who can tell me what the three basic principles of Formula Toy are? It's uh, affordability, safety, and uh, uh, dependability. Perfect, that's right, that's what it's all based around. Now, knowing that, what do you got to start with? This is obviously a spec class, so it's got rules. What do we have to start with? What base vehicle? Uh, you need a Toyota truck. What kind of truck? A uh, pickup truck, 4Runner, FJ. Basically any Toyota. Any Toyota. So what kind of things do you have to leave in there that have to still be Toyota to compete in this class? The, uh, the engine, the axles, and the frame have to stay Toyota. What about uh, transmission, transfer case, all transmission, that Transmission, kind of transfer case also. We divided the guys into groups, and each group will be responsible for a modification on a different area of the truck. Let's take a look. Group one, engine placement. Group two, we'll build the axles. The third group is responsible for the transmission and our dual transfer case setup. This group has got the chassis, body panels, and seats. And our last group will be in charge of the suspension, tires, and wheels. And before any fabrication happens, we gotta tear down our donor. This 1982 solid axle Toyota will be the beginning of our formula toy. Ready guys? Yeah, all right. All right, guys, as you probably learned by now, rock crawling is a sport that comes down to inches and axles. So we're gonna take these two front axles and we're gonna do something a little bit different with them. We gotta strip them down and basically armor plate the bottom side of them. And we're gonna be eliminating this fill plug on the bottom side of both axles. If we rip that out, it's all over. Now, you guys met Dave from Poly Performance yesterday. Yeah, yeah. He was nice enough to deliver this axle right here. Now, this is an axle out of an IFS truck it's a newer model and it's three inches wider. The rules say we can still use that axle because it's originally a Toyota part and we can take all the guts out of this one and put it in that one. We've got to gut these things down, clean them up, plate them, and then we can start putting some internals in them. Any questions at all? See how easy that is? Get to work. As you can see, the Wyatech students are well on their way to making that a rolling chassis by the end of the day. And after the break, we'll get to take a look at what's going to power our Extreme Wild Crawler.
We're back on Extreme as we come to you from WyoTech Sacramento campus. Now these students are getting one heck of a final exam. Build a truck, but not just any truck. This rig is a formula toy, a full tube competition crawler that is excellent on the trail, while providing the ability to run in sanctioned competitions against other formula toys. And with our donor now stripped to the bare frame, they can begin planning exactly how they're gonna make this rig come together. All right, guys, you've got it sitting on the chassis. Now, how are you going to mount it to it? You don't know yet? <laughs> I'm going to weld it in. <laughs> of course, we're not going to let these guys make any mistakes. Jesse and I are here to teach as well as supervise. And of course, pitch in. All this stuff will be stripped. We'll strip this down to a 100% bare tube housing. Right. Then we'll go ahead on this side. This is the fill plug we were looking at before. Yeah. We'll shave that off. We'll build armor up here like this to protect that front. Okay. And we'll just take the plate and put it right along the bottom of the diff so it rolls over. We'll do all the welding here with the actual third member piece bolted in place to keep the thing from distorting. All right, with these axle guys well underway, let's see what Jesse's got planned for the engine. All right, now that the chassis is taken shape, it's time for us to start figuring our engine placement and our motor mounts, right? Since our donor engine is pretty much shot, we want a capable comp rig we're going to need a little bit better engine than this. So we went to LC Engineering for a Stroker Stage 2 22R engine. So this thing dynos at over 120 horsepower and 150 foot-pounds of torque. Doesn't seem like a whole lot of power. Well, you got to look at it this way. Stock Toyota engine has about 80 to 93 horsepower. So we're giving it about a 40% advantage, right? Cool. So if you compare it to like a big block with 300 horsepower and we give it 500 horsepower, that's a 40% advantage. Now, just because we're starting with smaller numbers, this is going to be huge when it comes to this engine. How do you get that much power? Do you want to hand me that intake manifold over there? LC Engineering spent probably over eight hours porting and polishing these, these manifolds and the head. So we have a port match, and it's going to give us beautiful airflow. Earlier, our transmission team tore down the stock setup, as well as prepped our top loader gear cases for the doublet. Having an automatic transmission in a rock crawler is obviously a huge advantage, but nobody until now has figured out how to fit the stronger gear drive top shift transfer case behind one of these things. Now Jim was here from Inchworm Rock Walk and Gear, and he has his new system for us, so what did you guys learn from him? All right, well this is our original four-wheel drive automatic transmission, and we learned that it's pretty much the exact same as the automatic from the two-wheel drive. So what we did is we took our original transfer case, gutted that all out, and we took the parking pole and installed it with a shorter rod, just like it would be in the two-wheel drive. So the transmission's now taken care of. Now what about what happens next? All right, now we have this adapter thing, which allows us to put the 21-spline manual drive gearbox to the automatic transmission, which is a 23-spline. We do that via this coupler here. Through this transfer case, we had to modify this output shaft to go through the doubler here into the crawler box. And we get to the crawler box. What's different about that? Well, this is from Advanced Adapters and it's been clearanced in here to fit the larger 4.7 to 1 gear ratio and we went ahead and installed the 4.0 to 1 in the back. Now the cool thing is, is Advanced Adapters, this is also one of the very first one that's come off the shelf and Advanced Adapters is going to be able to sell these things in the future with all the rails and rods so when you go to do a doubler setup like this you're not going to have to source a secondary transfer case. So you guys have some great one-off first ever parts here, you've learned a lot, now let's put it together. Stay tuned. More extreme 4x4 after this brief timeout. We're back on extreme where our 22 apprentices are working feverishly to finish stage one of our Formula Toy project. There are no instruction manuals here. These guys get to choose how it will all come together. Over on our Hendrix chassis, these guys designed some additional bracing and down tubes to protect our rear passengers. Then walked the whole thing down to the street rod department where these hand-picked characters 
We're assigned the job of fabbing up some body panels. Uh, with chassis fab and street rod kind of go hand in hand with each other. Uh, when you think of doing work on a car or building a complete car, you, you, you hear the term ground up restoration. It is just that. You have to start with the ground up. And the ground in a car is going to be the chassis and the drivetrain, and you work your way up to the rest of the car. The adapter and doubler setup will bolt up directly to the back of the automatic. The bearings will need to be pressed into the adapter, then the entire assembly can be bolted together. This will allow the crawler multiple gearing options and a final crawl ratio of over 144 to 1. We just put these down tubes in here. And to add some extra strength, we put some gussets. Well, I decided to make these gussets really cool. So we took some extra large drill bits and drilled a whole bunch of different size holes. Went up one size on each drill bit and camfered each hole just to give it some extra cool. All right, Will, let's see what you got here, man. All right. All right, well, you got a pile of welding on the inside to take care of. But by the time you grind this all down, I'm sure that piece is going to look great, man. Good oh, yeah. job. All right, so the rear axle armor is taken care of. Now let's take a look at the front. How are you guys doing back here? Yeah, we're doing all right. All right, good stuff. Now we were here a little while ago and there was a bunch of work already done. You just, what happened with that? Uh, we didn't like the look of it, so we decided to change our design, take a different approach. All right, that was this thing here. You just cut it off? Yeah. All right, that's cool, man. Keep going. Right now our frame's coming together pretty well. We got our front cross member in. It's all welded together. We got supports going in for strength. Right now, Corey is finishing our front spring mounts, and after he's through welding this one, we're going to put supports in here, all the way down to the center line of the spring mount, and that's going to give us extra strength for climbing over those rocks. Basically, uh, the trick about lining all this up is you want to uh, level it out, square it up, measure it out. You want to make sure all your measurements have been done three or four times. All right, we're doing well. We've got pretty much all the really hardcore fab done on the chassis. We've got the engine together, the transfer cases together, the transmission together. All that has to do now is all little groups that have been working, they just gotta take all those pieces and slam them into one rock crawler. It's done. Um Start taking your measurements, make sure this thing's in here center. Start taking your measurements for your mounts from the frame out. After the break. An hour's worth of work that needs to be done in 55 minutes, go. Our extreme apprentices pull double duty in order to finish the day with a rolling chassis. This is what it's like to host overhauling. <laughs> All right, you guys are under the gun, and it's almost midnight, and you better get it done. I'll be over here having a Red Bull. All right, George, you took on this uh, ring gear install. What do you got going on? Well, this one's ready to go. The backlight's good on it. We took apart the old one. We're about to install the superior ring and pinion onto our Detroit locker, which is a really reliable locker for rock crawling. Here's your third member, Brock. Now you spent time with Dave from Poly Performance. What did he tell you about all these Toyota axles? All right, well the first thing he explained to me is that this neck down here on the stock Toyota axle is one of the first places that they tend to break. Also, there's a snap ring groove at the bottom. It's the second most common place to break. So on these 4340 Chrome Ollie ones that we got sent from Poly Performance, they eliminated the neck down and they increased the size for the snap ring to sit. Hi, I'm Kyle, and this is Joe, and we're going to talk wheels and tires. These are Pro Comp X trains and are specifically designed for rock crawling. They've got functional side biters, three ply sidewalls, and the new Extreme Traction compound will stick to anything. And for wheels, we have a top of the line beadlocks from Walker Evans. Most beadlocks have a welded outer ring, but Walker casts his outers right into the wheel itself. You just need a little muscle to get them together. With the drivetrain in between the frame rails, we can check the clearances for the tube chassis, we can make our cross members, we can finish our leaf spring mounts. Basically, this is the moment where things start working a lot faster. Up 
Yeah. I feel sorry for the big boys I have to get in here. It's like the villain song. <laughs> yeah. The front. Bring the front down a little bit. Just line up in here. You should be all set. Go. How's it look, guys? Very good. Now he needs a floor. Yeah. yeah. We'll come off the front of the knuckle. We'll pitch him back, and we'll come to the inside of that too. We are so close to being done. We can taste it. There we go, man. 22 students, a pile of tools, a formula toy built at Y.O. Tech. That's right, these guys worked their tails off and now they have a competition buggy they can be proud of. And to make their mark, these guys are gonna sign a panel, prove all the work that they did because in a few weeks, we're gonna have a whole different group that's gonna finish this thing with the plumbing and the wiring. They're gonna make this thing run. So for now, we're gonna leave this buggy here at the Sacramento campus for everybody to take a look at when they come and visit. And in all seriousness, guys, I think you guys need to take a lot of credit for this because, well, number one, you did all the work, and number two, the work that you guys did, honestly, it's phenomenal, guys. Like, seriously, it's one of the best things I've seen built while outside of our shop. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you later. <laughs>